Live from Vancouver, Canada, it's theCUBE at OpenStack Summit Vancouver 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsors EMC and jointly by Red Hat and Cisco. With additional sponsorship by Brocade and HP. And now your host, John Furrier. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live here in Vancouver, British Columbia for the OpenStack Summit. This is theCUBE. This is SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with CUBE alumni and previous guest, Monty Taylor, distinguished technologist of HP Cloud Group. Welcome back. You got to be a distinguished technologist. <laughs> I mean, you don't want to be non-distinguished, right? Yeah, I mean, you're definitely distinguished. Obviously, you've been involved. You've been on theCUBE many times. Thanks for coming and spending your yeah, lunch my hour. My pleasure, I know you're my super pleasure. busy, appreciate it. Um, we were trying to get the data, share that out to the audience out there. We're on the ground, we're seeing everything. We're seeing, you know, Randy Bias talking to Lou yeah. Tucker, huddling over there, doing a deal. It's a lot of <laughs> super duper action going on. Yeah, Biz dev, every yep. session, people are on the, literally on the floor. Oh yeah. So it's got that vibe of like it's, it's absolutely insane. There's 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 so many people running around doing so many things, and it's I don't know if if if, if this is coming across to you as well, but it it's so exciting to me how how many more of the people who are doing things are are the users and the and the deployers actually doing this. It's not it's not a whole bunch of developers just talking about you know what what features we're going to write. It there's there's actually and we got you know PayPal running all their stuff on 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 top of OpenStack. That's real stuff. It's really happening, and everybody yeah. here. Just talking about talking with each other, they're talking about their actual businesses. Yeah, and we were, you know, Mark Collier wrote a tweet, oh, it's the OpenStack community is mature. I'm like, what? Well, Stu and I, like, <laughs> rolling well, listen, our eyes. Come I, on, it's I not never mature. Be mature. I, mean. I mean, I'm not mature. I'm 49 <laughs> years old, I'm still 18. <laughs> but uh, my wife would say, you know, another kid in the house. Exactly, but no, but right? this is evolution, right? So it's, it's yeah. maturing. So Stu and I had a long commentary on Mark's comment saying it's complete BS, it's not mature. Long ways to maturity. However, it's maturing. You're seeing yeah. demos on stage that are live, yep. more use cases for diverse use cases, yep. uh, more production, yeah. not just POCs. No, it's in it's in production. It's, it's a building it's mode. Explain things, yeah. to folks out there, where are we? Because this is an important distinction when you see an event, yeah. like I mean, certainly a great venue in Vancouver, but when you have yeah. people in session, sitting on the floor, you have real production, it's, yeah. it's in full build out mode. And explain yeah. that dynamic. No, it's 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 huge. I mean, we've got. Uh, I mean, the, the the explosion of people doing it for real. I've got. I think I've got eight or ten different public cloud accounts from providers across the world. So, like, I just added a an account on on for my stuff uh, from with, with with United Stack from China. We've got uh, the OVH guys are are rolling out a thing in 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 Europe. Like, it's that's blowing out. So, what you wind up having here is you have you know you have Mark McLean's one hundred and one on Neutron talk where he's just going through basic things and it's it's literally spelling out the out the door because because the, the the big guys are getting their stuff up and running now everybody says okay I it's worthwhile for me to dive in and figure out how to do it. and they want to know they want to know what it means they want to know what the what what the what the stuff is so we we get people in here this is their first summit this is their first their first exposure to to how all this works and they can't get enough they can't get enough information right there's and they're motivated. There's so much to get they're so motivated they want to they're they're so hungry for uh, for, for learning things, and it's it's really exciting. And to, this crosses to get that over vibe. the POC kind of will OpenStack scale because like now it's scaling, if you will. You start yeah, to yeah. see things like certification. That's a proof yeah. positive that there's demand to start vetting out and putting some you know yep. certification. Exactly. You know, people update their LinkedIn profile. Hey, OpenStack certified. <laughs> I mean, but that's a market. It's certifiable. I certifiable. Know. <laughs> um, it, it really is. And what the other thing too, as we're seeing lots of different people, it, it was one thing when it was when it was just HP and, and Rackspace doing this, right? But now that we've got you know, eight, 10, 12, 20 clouds, the patterns start to emerge of, okay, what is it, what is it people really are doing? Because we could sit around talking in a, in a, at, at a bar about what it should be, but now we're actually seeing what it is. Yeah. You know, what, what, are the, what are the patterns that are emerging? And, then, and that's sort of helping the deaf core folks uh, to really be able to drive that definition of, okay, here's what you can expect. If you're building your business on top of this, if you're building your app on top of this, you can expect these things. We're seeing them actually emerge in the market and emerge in the, in the ecosystem. One thing I'd like you to comment on, Moth, mm -hmm. you've been involved in the growth and the momentum involved in the technical committee and all the yep. board stuff, and Eileen as well. You guys have great, been great, uh, great, great supporters, HP. Huge contingent, contributing a boatload of code. So, you know, yeah. you know golf clap for that. Uh, but I want you to talk about um, 
the, the, the dynamic between this community, there's still the founding core DNA of people who were involved in OpenStack, who shepherded it to, to that early adopter mode, yeah. now across the chasm, and then also now the new dynamic, HP being you know, there from the beginning, but still a big company. Yep. HP, you got IBM, you have Red Hat, yep. Cisco, Intel's yep. making some security announcements this morning, you got Oracle. Yeah. So, I mean, you have big whales coming in, and, and the tide is lifting all the boats. So talk really about that dynamic and compare and contrast that founding DNA, yourself and others that are still here. Yep. The founders are still around, you have new blood. What does that do to the community? I think, it, I think it's actually, it's really important. It's a really good question. Um, we, I think one of the things that we focused on from the very beginning, um, in addition to building great software, which obviously we want to do, was to build that, to build that community and to, to make a place where IBM and HP and, and Cisco can, can all come together and, and work, on, work on this thing collaboratively. So that's, that's actually been one of the goals uh, you know, since day one, and I think we did a really good job of of nailing that, so you, you get to the point where we've got you know we've got Vish at Oracle now, right? Like he's he's been there. He was he was in you near know, the the original Anso Labs startup that you know uh, that did work for, for for NASA. You know I'm I'm at HP. We've got you know we've got all of us because we we created that ability for collaboration. We're, we're not having to get rid of the the sort of initial startup folks uh, to be able to ride the, the 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 wave of success that we've got with the the big company, and at the same time, it doesn't mean that it's just the initial, it's not that important to, to, to things that, that I'm here personally. Um, I've done my stuff and I can still be involved, but the community also can bring in new blood, and all of these companies, yeah. all these, especially all these companies that are multinational, that are, that are worldwide, that's a whole different viewpoint on, on what you might want to do and, and what might be important to you. You got all these big clouds spinning up in, in China and India, They've got a different worldview than I do, and that's and and if we can bring them in and their and their energy and excitement as well, and also it's, the it's really balance exciting. of power too. Like yeah. when you have that passion of the that's early exactly right. founders, if you will, I can say founders, but you know early yeah, community yeah. guys, um, it's a balance of power because now if the big boys come in, big boys come in and they start throwing their weight around, yeah, they, they, the community they, has this nice balance to it because there's, exactly there's right. rules of engagement, if you will, right? They really are. There's there's some of us like you know like Vish and Jay and I that can that can sit here and be like, yeah, that's maybe. That's maybe not okay, but but day in and day out, it's uh, you know, it, it's uh, we've we've done a great job of making a place where these people can collaborate. And they know how to, like we we've actually set out the rules, so so we actually most of the time don't need to call anybody to task because it's really clear the the benefits and value to yeah. them from coming in and uh, and actually participating. Talk about some of the changes that have happened. Obviously, yeah. this big tent, uh, the main tent, whatever yeah, yeah. they call it, um, and you had the, kind of the loose integrated approach, which is kind of like, yeah. took on its own life of its own, but really was kind of a de facto way to do yeah. updates. Um, and the power that the big guys now bring as well, because also they're contributing. HP, for example, they you are. guys you know get props. Um, I don't think you get enough props, but you guys donate a boatload of code. So yeah. the this notion yep. of voting with your code or yep. contributing with code has value, but also you have now real niche and or scoped performance. Yeah. Cisco brings X to the table, Brocade brings something to the table, HP That's brings right. something to the table, and IBM brings something to the table, Oracle brings something to the table. Now each with their own agenda. Yeah. How do yep. they differentiate? How does OpenStack enable this new model with the big tent, the main tent, whatever it's called, for folks to cooperate and compete at the same time, co AKA co-opetition? Yeah, so, so that's, that's, a, that's an excellent question. One of the things that we, that we, I think that we accomplished with the big tent or that we set out to, to accomplish with that um, is, to, is to separate the question of, of who is OpenStack? Who are the people doing this? Who are we? From from the idea of of the of the code itself, because because people come in with a great idea and they say, hey, I'm IBM, I want to do I want to do this thing, or I'm I'm HP, I want to do this thing over here, um, and we were having to to bless that idea, um, just just to bring them into the party, right? And that's and that's not we don't want to be in the business of a blessing. We want to let the we sort of want to let the market sort that out. Like that's that's really important for that competition. Uh, to be able to take place in the in, in the outlining areas, even where on some things like Nova, not really particularly interested in in in, in lots of new competing projects to do the same thing as Nova, because that's really important to our our users. So we need both of those things. We need a vibrant competition because that's how you get better products. But ultimately, once our users start depending on something like Nova, 
um, then we need to make sure that that's going to be that that's going to be solid and and a thing that our, our users can can count on. So I think a lot of this is about focusing on our end users and focusing on people doing applications on top of it and making sure we're serving them. Yeah, and that's also the focus of getting quality releases out of that's exactly right. So you get the quality going. So I got to ask you on yeah. the, you know constant quality side, you get some nice machinery, you get the certification. Some yep. say we were coming a little bit late to the game, but you know Jonathan was even you know, admitting that hey we got we should have done that earlier, but yeah, yeah. it's moving fast now. Great. Yep. Now let's talk about the marketplace, right? Technology shifting. You have the three layers: <laughs> yeah. infrastructure as a service, platforms as a service, and software as a service. Yeah, yeah. I mean, people always use that as a way to kind of put people in boxes. Oh, oh. yeah, that's a pass. That's Cloud Foundry. That's all blurring. When you have a service-oriented architecture like the cloud, that's right. You have a service architecture. Can you comment on what your views are on the service-oriented approach? Because if you look at it as a service architecture, yeah. then you, you don't really care about layers. Or you do want you want resources? No, you don't. You don't care about layers. Is really great for for people writing blog posts. It's really great for for people making taxonomies and and selling consulting services. I think they like to they like to use acronyms and point at that. Ultimately, people getting stuff done, they're wanting they're wanting to get resources. A, a person wants a, a place to run their workload. You know, if you're doing image transcoding for, for a big media pipeline like the, the Digital Film Tree folks were, were showing us yesterday, you're, you're not thinking about is this a PaaS or is this an IaaS? Yeah, you yeah. don't care, you want to you wanna transcode your, your images. Like, I couldn't be more thrilled with looking at the, the, the demo they showed earlier today of, of, uh, of Magnum running on top of Ironic, right? So bare metal and containers. Everybody's like, cloud's about VMs. Yeah, yeah. We just added ba both bare metal and containers and here the two of them are playing directly with each other because it's a way for you to get your job done. They're all elements. So it's, but they, are, they really this are. This is how customers are talking. I mean, this yeah. is the language of the of the builder, right? Totally. So let's take that to another level. Explain yeah. to the folks out there that are trying to grok the whole cloud thing around those three layers, and how does that translate? What is a service architecture? As someone who's a builder, it's just a toolbox. Uh, what a, what is it? How do you describe that? It's a it's 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 tool it's tools behind APIs. So, so much of it is about the the self service aspect. You know, the traditional IT, you you call somebody on the phone, you say, hey, I, I think I want some, some, some computers. And they go, okay, well, I'll file a ticket for you. And two weeks later, you do it. So you just had a huge investment in time and, and resources to try something. In this case, you, you, you put these tools in the hands of the, of the makers in, inside of the companies, whether they're sysadmins, whether they're developers. I think we use the word developer a lot, yeah. but actually cloud is just as much of a tool for an ops sysadmin person yeah. as it is it's for engineering, a, for right? I mean, engineer. Oh, whatever, engineer. That's exactly right engineer, your ops engineer, I mean, you're engineering you, you, the solution. And you enable the engineers to, to do things without much red tape, that allows them to have a new idea and execute on it. Um, yeah. and, and then, as you see that come to fruition, they say, oh, this is a really great idea, this, is, this has driven our business to a to wonderful place, yeah. then, then you've got the tools to even scale those things out in a supported way in, in, in production without having to completely re-engineer everything uh, after the fact. So it, yeah. it really allows for agility and, and speed of, uh, of, of, of reaction. Let's Let's talk about some of the conversations in the quote engineer or developer software and community where our soft, so software is driving everything. Yep. I was showing you our crowd page, the Angular JS yeah, yeah. component. We have a node front end with CrowdChat and got Java on the back end. Yep. Let's talk about code bases. Java's got a good function for heavy lifting stuff, Angular yep. with real time, yeah. and then node for IO. So, I got to ask you, in this API-based economy, yep. what is some of the tooling, what are some of the things that are going on at the front end to make the cloud really render well in terms of whether it's visualization or whether it's using services. What's yep. the tooling of choice? I mean, obviously Angular just throw that in there because we just showed the demo. But no, like actually, I mean, we've we've got it the the right after right after the lunch break here. There's a uh, this guy. Uh, in fact, I was talking talking about him yesterday. Michael Krochek's leading a design summit session on what our Angular uh, JS story is inside of inside of OpenStack. OpenStack's UI uh, uh, project Horizon has been has been incorporating more and more of it, but they've been incorporating it in, in the context of the of the Python-based uh, web framework they've been using, and so now the question is: Okay, how about we how about we uh, we look at what the real story for this wants to be, right? And how how do we how do we engage with that? You look at other other things that other ways people are are, are interfacing with things. The, you know, the Google has the the Go language also showing up here. Uh, you know, Mozilla just released Rust as a as a 1.0. So the, the the world of that is moving just at a at a breakneck pace. But the key about all of these new things is they're all they all have 
have built-in understanding of REST APIs, right? Like yeah. you go to you go to Go, you write a thing, it knows how to interact with the REST API. You you look at, at Angular JS, it it knows it's not just you can do anything because it's a programming language. It has primitives built in to yeah. be able to do that, which positions things like OpenStack really well because the the trade and currency inside of OpenStack is is REST APIs. So you can make you can do that from from JavaScript. Yeah. You can do that from anything. And that's you want enabled to. built in native into the platform. That's so exactly right. So this is the new the modern tooling. This basically. is the modern tooling. This is the this yeah. is the way it all works. And and with that as a as a common as a commonality, everything can everything can talk to these APIs. Uh, and we don't yeah. we don't have to get into this language lock in war. If your business wants to be Java based, if your business wants to yeah. be .NET based, doesn't matter. You can use these APIs and, and you know how to do it. And that's the beautiful thing. I mean, you can, we were just talking about Azure potentially coming in and putting something on OpenStack. So OpenStack is really out there now where you can bring anything in. You can run a .NET with components. That's this is exactly this, right. This is the service architecture. That's exactly right. And, and, and we, we, we want to be that place uh, that, that allows you to, uh, to have a sort of common, common interface for, for, for getting all those things done so that, so that you can worry about your applications. You can worry about your business. You can yeah. worry about the thing that you're, that you're doing rather than, rather than spending all of your time worrying about yeah. different, you know, what's the language on the back end and how is that going to affect my ecosystem? Well, people are going to be bolting in a lot of different things, totally. whether it's third party kind of tooling yep. and you got analytics in real time and you got self-driving cars. Things are going not from near real time, but real time. All kinds of analytics solutions all going to be done on, you know, in, on, at wire speed or whatever oh, you yeah. want to call it. So I mean, real time is huge. Yeah, you just look, you look at, again, at the, the digital film tree uh, uh, demo from yesterday, and and the the transformation that was making into that into that uh, media pipeline. Right, they're they're filming in real time, sending dailies into into the cloud, processing them in another city, and sending them back to be included in in afternoon. Yeah. That's I mean. That's just the, the 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 mind shift that is for all of them, and what it, that allows them to do. And that's that's sort of an obvious one because they used to courier yeah, around yeah. tapes. But you know, but the same the same thing is true in all of the rest. Of, you know, banking and and you know. So I got to ask you. Retail. I mean, this is the build out dream right now. It's a nirvana yeah. for builders and engineers right now. And yeah. that's why you know the sessions are packed. Reminds me again the old early VMware days. Oh yeah. And I seen the Microsoft community in the '90s was the same way. Really yeah. rabid, and they the, uh, you know the eyes are popping out of their head. They're seeing a lot of creative opportunities and also hardcore build outs for you know, a lot of the transformation people are talking about. Yeah, yeah. So I got to ask you, you know, you're in the, in, in the industry as an individual, also you work for HP. What, what are the conversations that you guys are having at HP? I and mean, you guys are doing a lot of work in OpenStack, contributing a lot of code. What are some of the conversations you're having with customers? Where is this nerve, the utopia of building out right now? It's like, it's a maker fair, if you will, of cloud, whatever you want to call it. And it, just goofing on maker fair, which yeah, was just this past weekend. Maker, it's, I mean, it's, yeah, a, it's an engineering it's dream. A lot of stuff's happening. What's going on? What's your take on this? And what, what, what conversations can you share that kind of highlight this, this, this uh, revolution of well, building so, out? So in general, when I when I go when I go sit at, uh, sit with customers and I, I, I interact with them, the, the the themes that come out of that uh, have a lot to do with that the thing we, we mentioned earlier that that sort of self sufficiently. They all know that the world of the world of business, the the world of commerce these days is moving at a at a breakneck pace, and they've got to keep up with it. And the slower the, the slower their systems are to, to be able to react to their developers and their developers putting out new applications is they're, they're dead in the market if they do that. And they all know that. And so they want to get, they want to get onto the cloud bandwagon as quickly as possible. But that doesn't mean that they necessarily know what that means for their business. So not only is it a, a, a to your, to your point, a sort of a maker fair uh, for, for the engineers, but, but this is actually a, this is a business transformation moment. This is, yeah. this is people looking at what does it mean to move faster? How do we think about that? Think about funding cycles, think about how that works in, in, in finance, and how, how you think about strategic planning when you can, when you can turn around something in, you know, in a week rather than six months. That's a that's a whole different business mindset, and so in as much as we've got the engineers going in and building out these clouds, at the at the same time we're we're talking to the we're talking to the business side of the the coin about how how they need to start thinking about their their businesses differently and how they can take advantage of, because ultimately if they just install yeah. a cloud and and don't don't think about it in business terms, they they've just they've just but they've. Just, They've given their engineers yeah. a great, a great fun playground, but you know what, what's the point? So know? I got to ask you also. You know, as you know, the cube we're really big on women in tech. We've been covering a lot yeah. for years before. It's fashionable now. It's I guess fashionable. I mean, and people use it as more of a political thing, but you know, it's a lot of great women in tech. Yeah. And now with the scope and diversity of the solution and use cases, it's just not IT guys building stuff. It's really not. You have you have uh, women who are coding up to analysts 
with big data kind of converging together. So there's a huge swath of opportunity for women in tech. Yep. What are you guys doing there at HP? What's some of the things at OpenStack that you see happening that are compelling that there's, you could share? So, so we've, we've actually been making a, a really big push uh, on this in, in OpenStack. We're, we're big supporters of the, of the OPW program, which is, uh, uh, used to be called something else, and I'm, I can't remember what it is because it's just OPW to me. But so we've got uh, we've got OPW interns because part of the problem, part of the solution is getting is getting a good pipeline in. Uh, we're also uh, doing a lot of work on on things like codes of conduct and and things of that nature to make sure that we're creating a collegial environment and not one that that feels adversarial. You know, we we don't want uh, you know the the excellent women engineers to to come in and feel like they're just in a in an old boys club where yeah. you know where everybody's you know in a, in a locker room or something like that. And that's, that's, a, that's a thing that the community has to come together and understand and value. And, and I've, I've been really excited to see this. So there was, um, uh, there was a, a Women in OpenStack, uh, uh, there's been several Women in OpenStack events this week already. We, we do them, it's not just here at the summit. It's not just sort of a, you know, we get together a, a party. There was a, there was a great uh, session this morning, in fact, where uh, everybody broke off into, into things to see about how can, we, how can we do that. And there's some, some really concrete suggestions uh, and how we can structure the the community. HPR also in you know in my team and, and the other teams around, we're we're focused on on making sure that we're that we're providing uh, opportunities at all levels. You guys are doing some scholarship stuff, right? Yeah, we've got, we've got we've got scholarship programs for that. We, and how does that work? Uh, there's only so many things at HP that I I, ha I honestly have no idea. But, um, but you're giving out cash. We're, we're giving out we're giving out. Uh, uh, we're we're funding people to uh, to to work on things and also trying to uh, to have that provide then a pipeline into yeah. uh, you know to hiring opportunities because because honestly you do like a just a short term thing and then there's no follow up that's not that's not all right so the final question I got to ask yeah. you tell, share with the folks the, the things they should know about HP Cloud that they may not know about I mean besides the fact that you guys are probably one of the biggest contributors to OpenStack we are what are the things that you guys doing that people may or may not know about that you'd like to share we're 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 doing just about everything I mean, we've got the we've got the public cloud which is which is going strong you know I'm I'm a, I'm a huge user of that uh, we've we've got we've We've got managed, managed private things that, that we're doing for people, a bunch of private cloud deployments. Uh, a large reason that I, I mentioned all three of those is that ultimately each of our, our customers, and especially the size, as, as you might imagine HP's customers are, yeah. um, they're a single solution for, for a problem doesn't, doesn't work for any of those customers. You need a little bit of everything. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the digital film tree, I, I'm just, they were so awesome. Yeah. But I point at them, but they're a really good example of that. They've got a, they've got a private cloud, they're doing bursting to public, um, and that's a really great example for a lot, uh, what a lot of the enterprise customers really need. They've got different workloads. So we're, we're, we're focusing a lot on, on making sure yeah. that we're solving each of those things for people. You know, That's exactly there's right. There's a resource pool. They want pool. resources and they want to get to them Services by Services and resources that are program yep. pro programmable. That's exactly right. And, that, and having the tooling on the front end. It's all kind yeah. of coming together. So we're doing, we're doing all of those things and we're, 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 we're out there, you know, out there kicking it every day. All right, so I got to ask a personal question. Yeah. What are you most excited about right now in the industry right now? What, what, what gets you excited? You're a distinguished technologist. So what, as a distinguished technologist, <laughs> you love the joke <laughs> on the title. I know you're goofing <laughs> on yourself on that, but no, seriously, you've been in the trends, you're involved in a lot of stuff. What's 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 uh, getting you pumped up about? I things? mean, there's the obvious things. I mean, obviously, I'm excited about OpenStack, but that that probably goes without saying is not particularly you know interesting thing to come out of my mouth. Um, I I do think a lot of the stuff that's going on um, in the container space is 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 ex especially exciting. I think that the, the combination of, of those things. So I think the 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 landscape of of containers and VMs and bare metal and having all of those available um, uh, across an, uh, an infrastructure. I think that's really great. I think a lot of people want us want us to make that into a, a bloodbath. But I think that actually watching watching the people work on projects to stitch those together that's actually that's actually entertaining. Is Docker going to take over the world? No, Docker's not going to take over the world. It, yeah. it doesn't work for everybody's workload. But yeah. is Docker a really is, is a it's really enabling a lot of standards? Enabling a lot of standardization yeah. in a lot of places, so you integrate that. But it's that. not the end of the game. I mean, I talked to Ben Golub, he's like, no, we are far from over. No, there's I mean, no end of the game. He's still, the, he's still the, you know, the, working hard. The fact that the, the, fact that the, game, yeah. the game keeps expanding every, yeah. every single day, and the fact that, that we're seeing innovation in places that I'm, I'm pretty sure we weren't expecting to see innovation. I, I mentioned Rust from Mozilla earlier. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of that. It's a statically compiled language for doing things yeah. very similar to C. Who thought we'd be seeing innovation in that space? Yeah, I mean, there's, um, there's code for it's, everything. It's but Fantastic. You brought a bloodbath, and this is interesting. Yeah. You know, I comment on this all the time on the cube with Dave Vellante. Like, you know, the press loves oh bloodbath. Something is dead. Something's dying. It's like if it bleeds, it leads. On as they say in the media business, yeah, but. Yeah. 
there's really not a bloodbath mentality in no. this market because there's so much growth. Bloodbaths happen when there's constricting markets. That's exactly right. right. So what's happening here That's is exactly that right. there's so much fruit on the tree, there's so much beachhead. That's exactly. the container we, argument. Right? That's the like, container look, argument, and, it's like and this it's, is good there's stuff. people who want to say, oh, are containers killing VMs? No, containers aren't killing VMs. That's ridiculous. Yeah, they yeah. do different things. Yeah. What's exciting is that we're actually, the containers have now reached the, the, the maturity point where, where people are starting to make the sort of erroneous kinds of, 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 of thoughts, right? Now, now we've actually got choices yeah. for, for, for the consumers, and they can, they can do all sorts of exciting things, and that's, that's like the yeah. how how much that's changing every day is, is so growth is, is there there's large future growth coming so it's yeah. evolving and maturing yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely crossed over Monty thanks for coming on appreciate it my pleasure uh, Monty Taylor the distinguished engineer at HP Cloud great uh, uh, person to always have on the cube uh, he's been involved in the foundation board technical committee again grassroots in the core kernel uh, and the community's growing growing adding new blood thanks for joining on the cube we'll be right back after this short break. Okay.